Today I'm going to show you how to build the tool power box out of a kit. Let's get into it. All right, so let's start our project. Here are the things that you are going to need. First, you're gonna need your PCB kit that you got at Jack 35, right? Then you're gonna need the Makita box. This one has to be the large toolbox, right? Because there are several other sizes. Then the other important thing is gonna be your battery cells. And here is the thing that you're gonna have to uh, make a choice. The easiest way to build this project is to use brand new battery cells. 18650s, right? Any brand doesn't really matter, it's not that important. The only thing that you have to do is they have to be 18650s. But of course, brand new cells are kind of expensive. So the best and the cheapest, most affordable way is to actually harvest your cells out of modem packs. These are modem packs and I have a ton of videos showing you how to extract the cells from these, right? So what you end up is you crack these open and then what you do is you, this is what's inside. And these are good quality cells. These are Samsung 18650 26Fs, right? So these are 2600 milliamp hours. Then what you do is you take off all the stuff and clean them up and you end up with clean cells. That then what you can do is you can load up into your 25 uh, PCB boards, right? And I suggest that you test these, right? So you put them in a charger and you cycle them through a couple cycles and then you, you, you know, you can write in there, you know, the capacity and internal resistance and then you match them, right? So you put some that are not super degraded together with some that are really good. So they're as closely matched as you can. And then once you have that, then you load up your uh, board here, right? You just, uh, you pay attention positive to positive, negative to negative. And this is one of the easiest ways to build a battery because that's it, we're done. We built a battery, right? It's done, all you have to do is just put more batteries because you want it bigger than this. So another thing that I did is you use this heat uh, shrink wrap that we do, that we put in here just to protect it. You don't have to do it, but we, I did it, and so it looks like this when they're done. And all you need is a heat gun, and uh, you put it in there, apply it, and then it shrinks there and it protects the batteries, right? So all of our boards are gonna have that, and I already did that here. And here are our batteries, ready to go. Battery modules. All right, so first step, I say you do the dirty work first, and then we get that out of the way, and then we do the, the other stuff, right? So the dirtiest part of this work is cutting the face, right, the uh, board into this box here. And what you have to do is you need a marker, and then you, what you do is you flip this PCB backwards, right? And then usually you can, like my marker doesn't go all the way through, so what you can do is just eyeball it. And all you have to do is mark where that screw is going to be at because you have to stay away from that area and not cut it. You basically need meat there to be able to have something that the screw can attach itself to. So there's one there, and then the other one is right here, right? So there we go. So what we can do is we can cut like that, like that, and then pay attention to not cut there. That corner, this corner, And then over here, not cut that corner. So for the next part of this, you're gonna need some power tools. Well, you, yeah, I guess you could do it without power tools, but these are gonna help you a lot. You could just use a saw or maybe a knife, right? It's just gonna take you a long time to cut, but it's possible you can do it. But the easy way to do it is to use power tools. This one is just a drill bit. It doesn't really matter what size of drill bit you're gonna use. It's just to make holes to get the bit started, right? So now we 
try the face, see if it fits. We just have to uh, remove some of that stuff in there. Clean it up. Clean it up. There we go. Now let me get the screws. Okay. Next, the other messy part of this is going to be this connector. This connector has to come out. So now I've taken it off and the place where this goes, the best place is right here in the back right side of the box, right? Here's the front. This is how you open it. So this is the back and right in the middle here, midway. You make a thing there, that's where it goes. You're gonna have to install that in there because once you put the batteries in there, you won't be able to do it. There we go. It's fine. So after you assemble your five stacks of five boards, what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to assemble this whole thing outside and then try to put it in there, right? Here's the first stack and it's got the connector towards the bottom. So this is how you do it. You do it like this. And maybe to help you, you need to put that on the side. Make sure the connector there okay one thing that is very very important is that you need to make sure that all these stacks they're the same voltage if you have one that's like drastically different than the other one then that's going to complicate things because you might see sparks you might see a lot of energy being transferred while you're building this and you don't want that right you just want them to go together without sparks are scary so next we're going to do the back one here and the same thing with the connector towards the front the next one is the same thing with the connector to that side next one same way by the connector in there okay and last this one on this side. This thing right here uh, is optional, but it's very, very useful. Is the Batco BG-8S, right? This will allow you to check the individual cells in all of these modules, right? So first, what we need to do is connect these cables. This one, there we go. So now you can connect this because this is now connected in there. And here's the thing, if it doesn't work, if nothing happens, then all I have to do is flip it over. Bam, there we go. So our battery is alive and you can see the voltage of each individual group now in there, right? So total is 26.14 volts, but each group, each of the seven groups has about 3.7 volts and they're all pretty even. You can see that there's a variance of uh, four millivolts. So these are almost perfectly uh, balanced in here. So the last step is to put it in here, try it and slide this in there sideways. Almost there. There we go. And now what we can do is connect this cable to our face. That one connects there. And let's see if we have anything on the front. Oh, it's got the USB sockets in here, right? And this connects and this connects that so it doesn't waste your battery. Then this has your meter. And in the back, well, that's the power connector. And you can connect anything that's 24 volts in there. So the last thing to do is just to secure it with some screws on the front and in the back. And 
there it is. That is your battery. So, what can you use this battery for? Well, 24 volts, right? Anything that runs on 24. Some RVs run on 24. A lot of equipment runs on 24. There are 24 volt inverters. And here's the cool thing about this is that there are different boxes, sizes, and you could also build this box or even a bigger one, like that one that's behind you there, right? And you can just stack them and they attach to each other, right? And so this way you can build a bunch of little batteries that attach to each other and through the back, then you can just interconnect them together, right? And so you can build a huge battery with a bunch of little ones so that you don't have to carry one giant battery, right? And also uh, what I'm gonna do with this smaller size is also add the inverter. So I'm designing the inverter already in here and then put the connectors on the side here and you'll be able to just connect this one in here and then have AC plugs that you can connect and power tools and power whatever that you want. As, uh, as well as all kinds of other USB and low um, powered, uh, low voltage uh, connectors, right? Like 12 volts and all sort of stuff. So there you go. And that is how you build your tool power box. As always, this kit is available at jack35.com. Links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.